I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I always say, hi guys. Hi guys. I'm not. Hi everybody. Um, yes, a couple of housekeeping things here in case uh, you didn't notice. I am not wearing a black top. There are not very many videos on my channel where I am not wearing black. There's a whole lot of chatter going on in this condo around here about me wearing black all the time. And I don't wear it because I think it makes me look slimmer. I wear it because I think I look great in it. Anyway, I am going to uh, venture out and experiment and see what else I might look great in. I'm not giving up the black frames. There's some chatter about that too. I'm just not going there. Okay, first of all, a big shout out to my niece, Carla, and her co-workers. Um, I think it's fabulous, thank you, sweetie, that you sent me um, a message saying, Auntie Lady, did you see this in the paper? And um, dang it, I had seen it, and I was able to say, yes, I saw that. Actually, that's my topic this weekend. I've been was going to do it last week, and I sort of committed to something, another subject. So I said, we're going to talk about it this weekend. And I am really um, thrilled that, first of all, collectively as a group, it was something that they debated back and forth, and, and I wish I could have been there. Maybe we'll do a roundtable sometime. Um, but... It's also one of the reasons I started a YouTube channel because I, my husband and I, and as far back as when um, you know we had our son still living with us, um, we've been doing the condo scene and we've lived in concrete buildings, wooden buildings, 26 floors, sub penthouse. That's a joke. You need to see that one. Um, and now we're in a four-story wooden building. Not the first time we're in a wooden building, but anyway, you know what? I'm not going to say I've done it all, but I've certainly experienced some really cool things and some really horrendous things. And uh, so when I started this channel about a year ago, and I'm getting better at it now because I'm committed to that every week thing, um, is that my issue may not be your issue. And uh, you know what? Then like this particular couple that I'm going to be speaking about, uh, their problem. It really wasn't that big of an issue uh, apparently when they first moved in and it's a huge issue now. So just keep in mind my issue may not be your issue but my issue could become your issue if there's life changes going on or something changes within you. And so with no further ado let's talk about it and um, I'm going to show you two things in my our suite not my suite our suite that uh can add to a problem so let's make sure you stay tuned because i'm i'm not going to show you how messy my condo is right now but i'm going to show you uh things that you may want to look for and that could potentially add to the problem anyway i do have it sitting here this, okay this was on the front page of our paper a while back and then on the inside it went on to this particular picture was also on the front page of a, a newspaper not that long ago so this is what we're going to talk about and it's talking this young mom they their baby her name is faith so i think she's faith's about seven months old and naomi baker and her husband i from what i'm sort of getting have been living in their condo for about two years, maybe going into their third year. And um, they'd always sort of had, um, a, you know, the smell of cigarette smoke in their, seeping up into their suite. And, uh, but now they have a newborn baby, or she's seven months old. And before I go any further, just so, as I start talking and I get a little more definite about my thoughts and opinions, I'm an ex-smoker, you guys. I quit smoking, actually, um, on February, January the 7th of 2015. Uh, I was flying home from our place in Palm Springs because we were going to have a new grandbaby. And so I wanted to make sure I was here for, uh, for her birth. And so it was on that day when my husband dropped me off at the airport that I said, that's it, that's my last cigarette. Now, um, having said that, I was a closet smoker. I quit for four years, five years, then went back to smoking, back and forth. Oh, I can be a social smoker. And I've done the whole thing. I am now a non-smoker. 
but I have never ever liked the smell of cigarette smoke. I've never liked sitting beside somebody that's smoking, even when I was a smoker. So when I was reading this article, like I totally got it. I totally understand. You know what? I would just not want to be sitting here and smell it. I really, really wouldn't. And especially if it was my grandbaby sleeping in one of the bedrooms and that secondhand smoke who they've now determined is harmful to our health that I should have to put up with it right I think probably anybody hearing me say that is going to agree with me but we live in a condominium or you can call apartments are usually rentals condominiums are usually people buy condominium complexes and um, so what happens my understanding and the way it is this is my home. This is my home. If I want to walk around naked, I can. I can do whatever I want. This is my home. Once I open up my door in the hallway and I step out, that is communal. That is that anything outside of my suite is we all have a small vested interest in it. Even our patio out here that is um it is a partial is you know they can still basically tell me what to do and not to do and then there's beyond that which is all common property and yeah i mean i can't hang christmas lights out there can do anything. the strata determines and also our uh, strata laws in bc determine what you can do and then the strata can back that up with their own bylaws but I have a problem with this smoking bylaw in your homes, okay? They start it with, um, you, oh, I'm trying to remember, I'm gonna say about 10 years ago, they started with, if you, uh, there were some buildings where you could not smoke on your balcony, okay? You cannot smoke on your balcony because it's going to drift um, into other people's suites and so forth. And, um, you know, other people shouldn't have to put up with your cigarette smoke. And I agree with that. So if you wanted to smoke, you had to go into your suite, into your suite, okay? And we have a sign out there that says, no, no smoking within 20 feet of the building. Well, I can show you guys video after video. Everybody does. They figure, well, they're outside, why not? Like, that's enough. It's really hard to implement all of these rules, but I'll tell you one thing. It's really hard to implement when you start telling people what they can and can't do in their own suites. And like I say, I am still sympathizing with this whole um, smoke thing because I wouldn't want to smell it. But you know what? Um, that is not the end of it because it's called, they could, they're going to try to legislate it. They're going to take it to legislate, legislature and see if they can ban this. Well. I certainly hope they don't. I mean, I, I guess for her I do, but I really hope they don't because I'm starting to feel that now the government is going to legislate what I and my guests can and can't do in my suite. And I know we have this nuisance rule. And you know what? I have dealt with that, okay? Uh, my husband does not like garlic. I, anything spicy or anything it almost makes him physically ill and um, I'm going to actually be adding links to videos that I've done on this subject and um, so what am I going to do are we going to tell my neighbor uh, beside me or upstairs who's um, maybe you know they may be from India or they may be from Mexico or, you know, where they, you know, de me, I love spices. Bring it on. It would not bother me. It drifts into our apartment and it's not going to bother me. I love the smell and I'm feeling sad you didn't invite me to dinner. My husband, oh yeah, he's very much feeling like Naomi Baker does. Um, now, it's not potentially going to be horrendous to his health. But you know what? That's not a nice way to live in your own condo. Now, there's another one. I just want you guys, I'm throwing some stuff at you guys to think about. And I really hope the people that legislate all of this will think about this too. Five years ago, I fell um, off down four or five stairs onto the concrete. 
and my whole face was black and blue. Anyway, as it ended up, I ended up in ICU in Eisenhower Hospital with a uh, brain bleed and a concussion. And ever since then, I've been somewhat normal. <laughs> I'm kidding. But no, actually, um, I do still suffer uh, certain things with this concussion thing. And I have a real problem. I love loud music. I can handle loud music. But it's really weird. If it's something that's repetitious, it drives me nuts. Like, I, like I mean, I almost need to go bury my head because it, it's, it's, I don't know what to do. I mean, I'm ready to jump out of my skin. And I have to go hide somewhere and, and just kind of, I mean, I've had to go on medications to calm me down. Do you know why? We have new, new about three years ago, we had new people move in upstairs. When we moved in, we had a young couple. Now we've got a couple with two kids. And guess what? The kids are in gymnastics. And guess where they like to practice their routines? And guess what? When you do a gymnastics thing, run, 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 thump, run, 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 thump, run, 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 thump. Are you kidding me? Okay. And you know what? When I complained about it, I got a letter from the property management guy and I was supposed to keep track every night, how, what time, whatever, what this. Yeah, you know what? I guess I should do it at some point, but they've actually settled down a little bit, so that's good. But you know what? That's condo living. Who would have known, right? So, but it's their home too. And I guess you can't go over overboard on it. Now, the other thing too is when we moved in here, uh, like I said, there was no, no kids above us. What if there was a newborn baby up there and the baby was crying? Kids cry? I hear the kids crying upstairs all the time. And I'll show you where it absolutely bellows through. I'll show you guys in a few minutes. We're going to walk over there and I'm going to show you how clear it is. I can hear the dad yelling and screaming and I can hear the little girl just weeping away. Are you, this is in my condo. It's going on in their condo, but this is in mine. So keep this in mind. This is communal living. And you're gonna, you know, you're gonna either like say, hey, you know what, I could suck it up and, and live with it uh, or not. Now, I, like I say, I really hope, um, I know there's petitions going around. I know there's about 170 suites in British Columbia, which are totally 100% non-smoking. Great, I think that's great. And there probably should be a few more so people have choices. But I don't want anybody to legislate anything that's going to tell me how I should live my life within my four walls. I don't think it's right, um, and yet I get it, but people need to do their homework. You need to start, just, just because there's condominiums up for sale and you've never lived in one, find out what some of the, some of the things you may have to deal with and can you live with it when it comes up. And you know what? Your hands aren't always tied. There are some things that you can take to the strata. You can go at your AGM. Most um, uh, condos are having their AGMs right now. And you can vote bylaws in and you can vote bylaws out. And as long as they get registered, then they're a bylaw. And um, so there is so much we need to know. And like I say, I have sympathy for um, Naomi and, and her husband and little baby Faith, I totally get it. But you know what? I don't want the government to start telling me what I can do in my home or what I can't do. It's up to us then to figure out if it's gonna work for us. And you know what? You're buying in a condo, you need to think ahead a little bit. If you're gonna have a family, and I know, if you're gonna live in a smoking building, you're probably gonna smell it. But you know what? I've actually never smelled it in ours. Well, I shouldn't say that. That window in the guest bedroom's open and they're standing out there, of course. But you know what? I can also smell the guy barbecuing on his patio. I can smell his salmon barbecuing or his steak burning, okay? Um, so there's a lot to think about. But you know what, you guys? I wanna take you and show you a couple of things and then um, I kinda got an idea on, on what I think, and I think you're probably gonna figure it out pretty quick, what I think needs to happen. Okay guys, this is my little cupboard above my fan, above my stove. Okay, I'm gonna turn it on. It's gonna get loud. Now, you guys are not gonna see this right now, but I'm going to attach something to that fan 
and you're going to see uh, what has happened here. Now the other thing I want you to look at is that's where it goes. Now just remember there is a huge funnel all the way to the top and everybody sharing this um, what I don't even know what to call it but this flu exit. Okay, you guys, we're in the spare bedroom right now. Don't look at the mess, okay? I'm taking you guys on a journey. This is the closet to our spare bedroom. I want to show you guys something. Okay, this is kind of dark. I apologize, you guys, but you know what? Let's just get down to the real thing. Yes, and those are all my clothes and all my stuff. Now, this is in the closet, the spare closet. And this is in the spare closet. And I mark it because uh, when we go away, I want to make sure that this is turned on. Wow, this is really crummy for lighting, I know. And I apologize, but you get the gist. See the water? I put little strings on it so people know what to turn if they have to come in and leave. And can you see, you guys, I've got uh, downy sheets in there. Because you know what? The stink the smell that drifts up and down and this goes you guys probably can't see it goes all the way down to the because we're main floor but not really parking garage and it goes all the way up and we all share this piping is for everybody's piping is put in here somewhere all the way up well you guys those are just a few of the things where I live now having said that none of them are um life-threatening or none of them have been proven to be harmful to my health of course unless i go off the deep end on some of these issues you know i really need to say i you know you, you just need to do your homework i mean now in canada we've legalized pot now for the medicinal stuff that you get a prescription for it it's my understanding really doesn't have an odor. But you know what? There is so much to consider, you guys. Please don't go out there and spend 300, 500,000, a million. You know what the prices have been in BC, but they're coming down. Thank you. Um, do some of your homework. And you know what? Pick your poison. But no, I don't want anybody to tell me or I don't want anybody else to be told how they need to live within their four walls. This is this is my this is my domain, and I will be try to be most considerate of all of my neighbors when I'm outside, and that includes slamming doors. Now, this is what I think. Instead of our legislators coming down and telling people what they can and can't do within their four four walls, because They've coughed, coughed up $800,000 to live in a condo. Why don't you not worry so much about how much money you are putting into the coffers, which I know sometimes can help us, our ta us taxpayers, but why don't you start implementing stricter building codes on all these developers who are literally throwing these buildings together? Why are those gaping holes there? That um, hot, cold, hot and cold water thing, it didn't even stay on there. I don't know if you guys noticed, the whole thing actually fell off. It's just sitting on the floor there because whatever framing they put in it just literally fell right off. Um, there's gotta be a better way that you guys can um, build these things, okay? I mean, all these uh, um, gaping holes underneath the baseboards why aren't they sealed properly and i'm going to be doing a video on that i'm getting a handyman uh an awesome guy he's actually my son-in-law who's really anal about building and putting things together i want him to go through this place and with with me and and you guys and just maybe give us some ideas on what 
what can be done and maybe what should be done. And I would love to, um, you know what, we have, um, you guys have seen my videos with uh, Tom Monroe, who does inspections all the time on brand new condos. Nobody's even lived in them. And all the things he finds uh, that shouldn't, shouldn't be, they're not even to code. Are you kidding me? So why don't we just make those people build better homes for all of us? And you're gonna say, well, if they have to start doing that, they're just not going to make as much money as they've been used to making. After all, you know, I mean, the profits need to be big and huge. And I realize that you guys put everything on the line to build these buildings and homes for us. But you know what? There's God, there's codes for everything. And I think that's what we need to ramp up. Attach a video. It's going to be at the end, trailer at the end. And it's going to actually show, I show you guys my, our bathroom pocket door. And like I say, I'm on the, we're on the main floor and I th I'm gonna say that oh, I'm really bad at, at man measuring things, but that particular ensuite um, has got no outside walls attached to it. It's like in the far corner of our suite. You guys need to go and look at that and see what is blowing through that door. And then half the time, it smells like car fumes. So you know what? We're far from over you guys. Do you know what? Let's ramp up building codes around here. Let's let's make the builder, I don't know how you implement it because inspectors just seem to walk by it and not even see this stuff. I don't know, somebody's pocket being greased, I have no idea, but you know what? I'm glad this is a conversation, but I think it's, I think it's the wrong conversation. I think we need to hold our developers responsible for throwing crap together. And I don't care if I'm talking about a two million project because my girlfriend, her husband just walked away from a $2.3 million project. And now they're going, thank God that we did because um, they know somebody has been doing some work in, in those particular projects and they're beautiful. They're on the water and all they're hearing is it's garbage. It's just, it looks great when you walk in and you live in it for six months, a year, and then you start realizing how it was actually all put together. So you know what, we need to get pickier, we get to get more demanding, because you know, we're paying huge money. Now we're living on a pretty big property here, but most of them, they're on postage size lots. So, you know, it's always been known, and we've built a few houses of our own, um, that it's always cheaper to go straight up than to spread out. So when they're going straight up, Ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. But you know what? You need to do a better job. Anyway, you guys, I could go on forever. This is going to be way too long. Carla, you guys, thank you for checking in. And please, um, give me some feedback here if you live in a condo, okay? Um, give me some feedback if you're thinking of buying a condo and maybe, you know, have I experienced it or not. And like I say, you just can't be too anal when you're going to move into a condo. Uh, think ahead a little bit, what your needs are going to be, where you want to be. And uh, you, need to, you need to search. You need to look for that building, okay? So that's a lot to keep in mind. That's, uh, yeah, condo living is really not that easy. See you guys. See you next week. Take care. Bye.